Bonjour à tous, bah écoutez, j'espère que vous allez bien. C'est lundi, so hi everyone, I hope that uh, you're good. So it's Monday, we'll have the beginner uh, lesson today. So first, of course, I will say hello to everybody if I can, because you are a lot. Um, Inasi had a question, but sorry, I mean, it will be difficult to, uh, to answer that. Origami is here. Megna, Sundar, Rita Asor uh, is here too. Raya Rahayu, Bikert, Rita is, well, is here again. <laughs> Yossi, Maria Betania, Victoria Jacques, Shravani est là, uh, Kajal Malik. Ice Cubes, of course, Lovina, Daria, Olga Ruiz. Wow, okay, well, I'm really happy to see you all here. Widad is here, Olga Ruiz, as I said. Luciana Moribe is here to save the best, just arrived. Uh, well, I, 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 I'm really happy to see you all here. And uh, well, we'll start the lesson if that's okay with you right now. So as you might know, because I've been talking about that uh, last week or uh, in the second part of the week last week, and then I'm starting the new, a new series that I thought might be interesting. And uh, well, the idea would be uh, to work with you on the pronunciation. So I would like you to uh, record yourself with your phone or with your webcam or I mean, whatever device you have uh, while pronouncing uh, the phrase that we'll see after. Then you send me your video file. And after that, I will uh, make a uh, well, a video with the clips, and then I will give you some uh, some advices uh, regarding your uh, pronunciation and how to make it better if there are things that we can correct. So everything is extremely positive. I mean, I guess you know me. So it will be just to give you some uh, some tips. Okay. So I've been already receiving some some videos. So for the persons who sent me the videos, don't worry, I've got them. I'm just waiting for few more lessons, and then after that we will. Uh, I mean, I will make uh, the big video and I will put that on the channel. So the sentence that I would like you to pronounce is Je voudrais visiter la France, mais c'est difficile en ce moment. Je voudrais visiter la France, mais c'est difficile en ce moment. Ideally, I would like you to try to pronounce it quite slow, uh, slowly and quite clearly, okay? And maybe you can pronounce it uh, two times because it's always better to pronounce it two times. So I think it could be, uh, it could be uh, good, that's it. So Ice Cube is saying that we've got a uh, Korean subtitle here. <laughs> well, you never know, uh, why not, why not? <laughs> Okay, and we will start with the question of the day. And the question of the day is, qu'est-ce que vous allez faire après notre cours? So what are you going to do after this lesson, after our course? Okay, so I would like you to write me one answer in French, uh, and then we will see uh, what you write. <laughs>
Alors, Rahayou uh, is the first one to say « Je vais dormir ici, c'est tard ». Très bien écrit. Uh, Inasi, je j'ai révisé à l'examen. Remember, Inasi, uh, the question is like in the near future. So I would expect a near future and not the passé composé. So je vais réviser pour l'examen. Rita, je vais faire de l'exercice, d'accord. Andrei, je commence les cours dans mon école. Très bien. Xuan, je vais faire de la cuisine. Parfait. Ankan, j'ai eu un cours en ligne de mon école de français. Okay, be careful on Kan Basu. It's the same thing. When I'm asking this question, I'm talking about the near future. Hein? So it's something that will happen after. Justine nous dit, je vais travailler. Okay. Yesero, je vais étudier pour mon autre cours. Parfait. Euh, 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 bra, alors attendez. Brahmani, je vais pratiquer des choses que j'apprends, ok Kajal, je vais au bureau pour le travail. Yasmine, je vais prendre un café. Monisha, je vais dîner avec ma famille. Sundar, je vais regarder le cricket, d'accord euh, Origami, je vais dehors, ok Daria, alors Daria, attendez, je vous ai perdu. Après ce cours, je regarderai quelques vidéos utiles et je voudrais faire du sport et une promenade pour me rafraîchir. Très bien écrit. Mohana, je fais. So be careful, Mohana, je fais. It's F-A-I-S. Hein? Remember to conjugate the verb in the first person. Des courses avec mon mari. Très bien. Stéphanie, je lis la Bible. Be careful because Bible is uh, feminine. OK? So la Bible. And then when you put je lis, then in that case, you should conjugate the verb lire. It's l -I -S for the first person, so je lis. Arman, je vais faire de l'exercice. Luciana, je vais manger. Emma Chomao, je vais me laver les cheveux. <rire> bah ok, ok, très précis. Mujahid, je vais manger. Mujahid, be careful. When you structure this type of uh, uh, near future, je vais, so you conjugate uh, the verb aller and it's good. But the second verb should be definitely in the infinitive form. Okay, so uh, er, hein? manger er. Uh, R. Then, Yossi, uh, Yossi, Yossi, je vais dîner après ce cours. Uh, Lanora, je vais manger, très bien. Bikert, je préparerai quelque chose. Attendez, je vous ai perdu, I lost you. Pour le dîner, après, nous mangerons ensemble avec ma famille. Très bien. Victoria Jacques, honnêtement, je me suis réveillé très tôt aujourd'hui pour que je puisse faire une sieste. <rire> Ah, ça c'est la technique, hein. c'est la technique. Papillon 97, après la leçon, je vais me faire un jus d'ananas et je boirai avec grand plaisir. Save the best, après ce cours, be careful, save the best, cours is masculine. So your uh, demonstrative should be ce, ok, c'est e, je vais sortir me promener, très bien. Sapna, après le cours masculin, le le le, je prends... P-R-E-N-D-S, mon dîner en regardant la télé avec ma famille. Euh, très bien. Ensuite, euh, Rita sort. Oh, thank you very much. Rita is always, uh, uh, you're, you're just the dream person. You are uh, giving me a beautiful gift every time. It's so nice. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, Rita. Oui, Dad, je vais faire le goûter pour mes enfants. Mohana Devi, je vais manger le souper. Lovina, je vais drive. Okay, I'm not really sure about this sentence, Lovina. Uh, it's a strange sentence. <laughs> I don't get this one. I just called. J'ai eu un mauvais jour, donc je vais sortir pour le shopping, peut-être. <laughs> The famous technique. Uh, you buy stuff to forget that you have a terrible day. Lily, je vais continuer à étudier le français. Uh, Dorje, je vais dormir. Uh, Brahmani, je vais faire de la danse. Ice cubes, j'irai chez moi et je préparerai mon dîner parce que je suis au travail maintenant comme d'habitude. Écoutez, merci beaucoup. On va continuer. Uh, 
Alors, how would you translate these uh, sentences? And we'll start with the first one. So, please uh, tell me, how would you translate I like to travel into French? Alors, we do agree that in that case, we're using one of the verbs that is extremely uh, popular in French. It's aimer. Why it's popular? It's popular because we can use it to express I, I like, or then I love, or even I adore. So, it's quite wide. So, in that case, we will use it like that to uh, express this I like uh, concept. So, the, the, the rule is quite strict, huh? because we put uh, j'aime in the first place, so of course, we conjugate the verb aimer, j'aime, and then after that, you will put, well, the, the, the infinitive form, uh, voyager, so the verb voyager is from the first group, quite regular, so j'aime voyager, okay, so let's have a look at the second one now. So, she watches a Spanish series, how would you translate that into French? Alors, let's have a look at the translation. And before that, by the way, don't forget to be nice with me and click on the little like uh, button. I know I, I tend to insist uh, on that each time now, but it does represent a lot, I mean, for the persons who want to look and to find this, uh, this video. So it is your contribution to uh, uh, the fact that the authors can uh, benefit from this video. So let's have a look now at the sentence. So the first thing that we need to remember is the fact that, well, the verb is regarder. So regarder, uh, first group, so actually quite simple. So you will conjugate that in the third person. So elle regarde, remember, you will put it with the, the ending E, d'accord? Then, after that, remember that first, in French, uh, une série will be in the singular form. Uh, we don't put that in the plural form, we put that in the singular form. So, une série. As you can see on your screen, ideally, I would expect a beautiful accent aigu on the first E, uh, série. And then the other thing that you need to really remember is this espanol. So espanol, in that case, I am putting, because it's an adjective, everything in small letters. I'm not putting capital letter in the first letter because it's an adjective. And then the thing that you also need to remember is because it's an adjective, it is connected to une série. So it will be with the feminine in the end. Espanol with the final E. Uh. D'accord? So be careful because it sounds the same. Uh, you pronounce it exactly the same way, but still you should definitely write it. Elle regarde une série espagnole. Allez, on continue. Troisième phrase. 
you want to talk to me. How could you translate that into English, uh, into French? Sorry. Alors, in that case, I was expecting uh, the verb vouloir. Somebody has been writing tu as envie. Uh, well, I could accept it, of course. Why not? But then I was really expecting the, the verb vouloir just to see uh, how to conjugate it. Because it's a, bit, uh, it's a bit tricky. So vouloir, remember, it belongs to the third group. And when you will conjugate it, so for the first person, je veux, it will be exactly the same form as the form that you can see on your screen. V, E, U, X. Tu veux, as you can see, you write it the same way. V, E, U. U, X. Il, elle, veut, it will be V, E, U, T. Okay? So this is the first part. Tu veux. After that, of course, parler will be in the infinitive form. So tu veux parler. Okay? But remember that in that case, we need to squeeze somehow the pronoun. The pronoun complément d'objet indirect. And the way it goes, remember in French, the pronoun is coming always before the verb it is related to. And in that case, me, well, it's connected to parler, so it should come before. Tu veux me parler. And this is the way you should write it. Let's have a look at uh, the number four now. Number four, we can't come. Alors, let's have a look now at the form. So the verb, it's pouvoir. Hein? Pouvoir is can. So pouvoir, uh, it's a tricky one too, because it will be conjugated a bit like vouloir, as we saw previously. So je peux, P-E-U-X, tu peux, P-E-U-X, il peut, P-E-U-T. And after that, we go back to the connection with the infinitive, nous pouvons, P-O-U-V-O-N-S. Vous pouvez. P-O-U-V-E-Z. And we go back to the first root. Ils peuvent. P-E-U-V-E-N-T. Okay? So in that situation, nous pouvons. Then after that, of course, we put the negative form before and after the verb that you conjugate, and this is the one, it's pouvons. Nous ne pouvons pas. All right, and the last one will be the verb hein, to come, and it's venir. Nous ne pouvons pas 
venir. Remember, venir should be definitely in the infinitive form because it's coming after pouvoir and pouvoir it's already conjugated. So let's have a look now at the number five. I am at home. I am at home. How could you translate that? Alors, I can see that some of you uh, are writing à la maison. We agree uh, that à la maison, it would be an option. I wanted more to uh, go into this preposition uh, chez that we use quite much. And then, as you can see, we will combine it with uh, pronoun tonique. So, je suis... Chez moi. I am at home. Je suis chez moi. But if you say je suis à la maison, I mean it's totally, uh, it's totally correct. Uh, Somebody is asking that if it's the C1 level. No, <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> Here we are A1, A2 level. I mean this is A1, A2 level. These sentences are usually, well, yeah. I mean A1. This this one, for instance, is clearly A1. So A1, A2 level, it's not C1 level in that case. Let's have a look at uh, the number six. Number six, I have two cats and three dogs. So how could you translate that into French? Alors, I can see that Daria is trying to, to revo revolutionize the, the French language, hein? offering, offering a new word, droit, D-R-O-I-S, <laughs> but you corrected, I saw that, so no worries. So, uh, in that case, of course, I have basic verb, but extremely important, hein, to have its avoir. So, in that case, remember, when you conjugate it in the present first person, it's j'ai, so j apostrophe and then a i you pronounce it e e e j'ai. Then, as you can see, well, we'll have to put the number. So de, remember you write it like that d e u x. Sha, it's important to put the s at the end of sha because it's the mark of the plural. Naturally, the word sha is written c h a t. Okay, but if you put the plural, then you add the mark of the plural, S. E, and then it will be the same for trois chiens. Remember that chien, naturally, you write it C-H-I-E-N. But then you will put the S at the end of uh, chien, just to mark the plural. So let's have a look now at the number seven. And number seven is my name is... Isabelle. 
So, of course, I'm not expecting in that case a direct translation because you could say mon nom est Isabelle, which is not really good. I would like to know how you could and what usually we do when we introduce ourselves and if this person wants to introduce herself. My name is Isabelle. How do we do that in French? Alors, so we agree that the verb is uh, s'appeler. Uh, s'appeler, it's a reflexive verb, but more clearly, I mean, more generally, it's a pronominal verb. So it means that we will use some pronouns with it. So, je, and then you will put the pronoun me. But obviously, because the verb is starting with the sound of a vowel, you will have to put the apostrophe. M, m. Je, m, appelle. Je m'appelle. And let's uh, agree on the fact that s'appeler, it's from the first group, but somehow it's a bit tricky with this question of one L and two L's. So it means that for je, tu, and il, singular or plural, you will have to double the L. Je m'appelle, tu t'appelles, il, elle, s'appelle. And the plural form, it's exactly the same pronunciation. Il, elle, s'appelle. You double the L. But for nous and for vous, only one L. Nous nous appelons, vous vous appelez. Okay, so in that case, it's je m'appelle. And after that, no preposition, nothing. You just put the name after. Numéro 8, numéro 8, regardez, we speak English. Alors, Rice was, uh, was asking when is the next uh, beginner uh, course. Well, it's on Thursday. So basically it goes, it's quite, I, I try to make it quite simple. Monday, beginners. Uh, Tuesday, intermediate. And Wednesday, advanced. And after that, we go back to Thursday, beginner. Uh, Friday, uh, intermediate. And then Saturday, advanced. Voilà. So we speak uh, English in that case. So the verb... Well, the verb that we use in that situation is the verb parler, parler, regular verb from the first group. So it means that if you conjugate it, it won't be really difficult. You just go for je parle, e, tu parles, e, s, il, elle parle, e. Then, in that case, what interests us is nous parlons, o, n, s. Vous parlez E, Z, and then il parle E, N, T. So in that situation, it's nous, nous parlons, and then look at anglais, same thing here, no capital letter, because we use it like that, it's a language, we're not talking about the persons. Uh, so this is extremely, extremely important, don't put any capital letter when you're talking about the languages. Numéro 9. I hope you're ready because I am. <laughs> Allez, it's really good.
Alors, before doing that, and I insist, because I am not a specialist in mathematics, but then I, I see that there are uh, 87 persons uh, watching the stream, and I've got only 43 likes, and it's not really normal. Please, like me! <laughs> Alors, look at that. It's really good. So this it's concept, it's, uh, it's, uh, it could be a long story. We could make, uh, in fact, a whole lesson on that. But let's agree that in that case, we will go for se, we won't go for il est. So we'll go for se. And then after that, you will put, well, the adjective mon. Okay, c'est bon. Keep in mind that, and it's really important, c'est bon, you will, because you're using c'est, always put the adjective in the masculine form. Keep that in mind, even if you're talking about something that is feminine, a noun that is feminine. This is extremely, extremely important. So, it will be always, always masculine. C'est bon. And I wanted to of course, introduce a little adverb to somehow emphasize the bon. And remember that when you want to use an adverb to modify an adjective, then it means that this adverb should come before the adjective. So, c'est vraiment bon. Okay, and the last one, look, numéro 10, numéro 10, oh, it's a classic question, it is a classic question, you should know it, I hope you do, what time is it? Alors, well, Rita is giving me <laughs> something again. I will have to sing a song for you, Rita. I will have to do something special just for you. But thank you very much. I mean, really, it means a lot. So let's have a look now at the thing. So first thing that we need to define is the gender of the word er. So er is a feminine word. Une er. So, why is it important? It's, in fact, it's quite important because it will impact the gender of quel. And that's the reason why we will use the feminine form quel, q, u, e, l, l, e. So, we start with the feminine form of quel, quel. Then we will put the word er. And after that, because it's a question, in that case, we will do the inversion. So basically, we will first put the verb, e, and then we will after put il. D'accord? Sundar is asking why il and not elle. Yeah, it's a good question. It's just because, uh, in fact, this il, it's not related to er, it's mostly related to this indefinite concept. Il est trois heures. It's this it is, in fact, concept. When you use this it is, it's just indefinite, and it's the same in French. So, il is, in fact, not related to er, but it's related to this indefinite concept. It is and then after that, you just give the, the, the hour, okay? So this is the reason why we have this il and not l. Quelle heure est il? Oh, then after that, of course, you can, you can ask it in many different ways. You can reformulate, you can put the, the, the original form. Il est quelle heure? 
But then you need to raise your voice in the end. Il est quelle heure? It's possible. Huh? But this is the classic way to ask uh, the time. So after that, you can play with the language. But of course, this is the more formal way to do it. Allez, the three verbs of the day. Uh, look at this photo, this picture, and then try to find me three verbs. Huh? Not words, not adjectives, not nouns. Verbs. I just want verbs, please. And then write me in these verbs, obviously, in the infinitive form. Alors, I can see that you are extremely inspired and extremely reactive. So, uh, Yossi, embrasser, aimer, rire. Maria Madalena, sentir, sourire, aimer. Très bien. Uh, Shravani, uh, embrasser, aimer, adorer. Très bien. Sundar, aimer, toucher, s'occuper. Daria, faire un câlin, se sentir heureux, heureuse, être ensemble. Daria uh, voulait utiliser plutôt des choses un petit peu plus élaborées. Et c'est parfait. YouTube browser. Toucher, rire, embrasser. Très bien. Aimer s'embrasser, sourire. Aimer embrasser, sourire. Nudia Ice Cubes et Bikert. Kajal, aimer adorer, embrasser. I'm scanning. Hein. Attention, origami. It's not câlin. Câlin is not a, it's not a verb. Hein. It's a substantive. It's a noun. So câliner would be uh, possible. I am now looking at your answers because I've got quite many things and I'm trying to see if there are some mistakes, in fact. Uh, be careful, Papillon 97. Debout. Ok, être debout, d'accord. Ok, ok, sorry, I didn't see the être. So it's good. Uh, Stéphanie Dante. I'm not sure. Uh, what do you want to mean, Stéphanie, with Dante? It's not a verb. Huh? It is not, a, I mean, not yet. <laughs> We can offer that to the French Academy, but so far it doesn't yet exist in French language. Ka uh, Ranjit, aimer, adorer. Yeah, please, please, please put the infinitive form. That's really important. Uh, if I ask you to put the infinitive form, it's really to see if you know these infinitive forms because they are really the key of the thing. So, uh, Maria Madalena, se sentir, no uh, in the end, s'embrasser is good. Uh, I'm looking at the others. No, it's, it looks quite, quite good. Rayayu is... Uh, J'ai sommeil, merci beaucoup. <laughs> Rayayu is going to bed. Bonne nuit. <laughs> Origami, Kaliné, oui, Kaliné. Uh, se faire un câlin. Origami would be possible. Se faire un 
câlin. Okay? So let's agree that for next time, because we'll have this, uh, this exercise, of course, regularly, I would really like you to put the infinitive form of the verbs, because it's extremely, extremely important. Okay, and once again, once again, I will bother you, <laughs> but still I can see that you're 89 person and I've got only 69 likes, so the persons who didn't click on the like, I mean, they should definitely click on the like before doing uh, the conjugation. So let's have a look at the verb of the day. Look at that. The verb of the day is the verb prendre, that we use uh, quite often. Obviously, and so, as I say all the time, remember that normally when you want to reach this advanced level, these are the tenses that you will have to, masters, uh, to master in French. So, three moods, indicatif, conditionnel, and subjonctif. But at this level, at your level, so the beginner level, we only expect you to master Présent de l'indicatif, futur simple de l'indicatif, and passé composé de l'indicatif. So we will only focus on these three tenses. Okay? So we'll start obviously with the présent de l'indicatif, and I would like you to give me je, tu, il, and elle of the verb that we have, and then présent de l'indicatif. So you are extremely reactive and it's a good thing. So, of course, the verb prendre is not a regular verb uh, because, uh, I mean, the most used verbs, unfortunately, are not regular verbs. So, but the, the important thing is that even if it's not regular, then, in fact, when you want to pronounce it, it's not that tricky. So, je prends, tu prends, il, elle prend, well, it's actually the same phonetical form. But then, of course, you will have to write them slightly differently. So look at that. Je prends, it ends with DS. Tu prends, it ends with DS. Il, elle prend, it will end with D. D'accord? So je prends, tu prends, il, elle prend. So please be gentle and give me nous, vous, il and elle for the plural. Alors, so I can see that you've been putting your uh, answers there. Yeah, they're coming now. So, um, and in fact, it's, it's, uh, this verb is a bit tricky when it comes to the plural, as you can see. So, let's be careful. Nous prenons only one N, and that's the reason why you would pronounce the E like a E. Pre, 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 pre. Hein? Nous prenons. Then, vous Prenez. It's exactly the same concept. Only one N, so you pronounce it E uh, like a E. Uh. Nous prenons, vous prenez. But look at the last form. 
the last form, you will double this N, and so it will impact the sound of the E uh, that is right before. It will open the sound. You will pronounce it like E, PRE, okay? IL, EL, PREN, okay? IL, PREN, EL, PREN. So one more time, nous prenons, really E, uh, vous prenez, IL, EL, PREN, really open. You don't need to pronounce any double N, you just open the E, uh, PREN. Okay, so let's have a look now, youpi, at the future simple of uh, uh, prendre and give me please, je, tu, il, elle. Alors, in that situation, well, it's not really tricky to get the root from prendre because the technique is that you, you have the infinitive. The infinitive is written P-R-E-N-D-R-E. -R -E -E. You just remove your final E and then you get the root. Prendre, P-R-E-N-D-R. -E and after that, you just put the endings. The ending for je, as you can see on your screen, it's A-I. Je prendrai. Then the ending for tu, it's A-S. You don't pronounce the S. Tu prendras. And the ending for il, elle, be careful, it's the uh, singular, so it's only A. Il, elle prendra. Je prendrai. Tu prendras. Il, elle prendra. Prendra. Okay? So please, 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 let's give me the nous, vous, il, elle in the plural form. Alors, the root is still the same. Hein? The root is still P-R-E-N-D-R, but then obviously the endings will be different. So for nous, it will be the classic ending O-N-S. Nous prendrons. Then for vous, the ending will be the classic E-Z. Vous prendrez. And remember, for il, elle, in the plural form, it's O-N-T. Ils prendront, elles prendront. D'accord So let's pronounce them. Nous prendrons, vous prendrez, ils... Oh, look. <laughs> This is how you do it. Look, we've been spotting something. This is me. I always make some mistake and then I just notice that. <laughs> when we're live and it's okay so you can see that you know I'm, I'm not a machine I'm just a man ils prendront O-N-T and then elles prendront O-N-T too so let's enjoy it and have now le passé composé passé composé could you give me please je tu il and elle
Alors, Ma Martin Robinson was saying, we were all screaming, yes, and you are entitled to scream. If there are some mistakes, I mean, we should definitely make the revolution here. So, <laughs> let's check now the passé composé. So, remember, passé composé of prendre, well, the first question, because it's a compound tense, I mean, we need to identify the helping verb it will use. And in fact, prendre is like most of the verb, verbs it will use avoir. Okay, so we will just take avoir and we will conjugate avoir in the present. J'ai, tu as, il, elle, a. So this is the first part. Because it's a compound tense, you know that you've got two parts. And the second part, it's in fact what we call participe, passé, this past participle. The past participle of the verb prendre is pris, P-R-I-S. And it's this part that you will put after, but you don't change it. So, j'ai pris, tu as pris, il, elle a pris. And as you can see, the fact that we've got elle, the feminine form, doesn't impact at all your past participle. So, pris will always stay like that. It will never change according to the subject. Okay, so let's have a look now at uh, nous, vous, il, and elle. Alors, regardez, regardez. So, let's have a look now at the thing. So, basically, we follow exactly the same concept. So, we agree that we are using avoir, that we need to conjugate in the present tense. So, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont. And then, the past participle won't change. It will be pris. Nous avons pris, vous avez pris. Ils ont pris, elles ont pris. I hope it was clear. I really do. And this is the picture of the day. So please write me a simple sentence to describe the photo that you are uh, seeing on your screen right now. Alors, Yossi is asking a question. Is there a difference between the pronunciation of E uh, in the... I mean, E, uh, yeah. Uh, in J and PREN, no. No, no, it's the same open, really the same open sound, uh, Yossi. So it's E, E, E. Really, you go quite high. You open quite wide the, the, the mouth. E, okay. So, J, PREN, it's exactly the same, Yossi. Uh, try to make it longer, and this is the concept with the phonetics. Remember, Yossi, je, you make it last. PREN, and after that you just re reduce, you make it normal. Je, 
prennent. Ok Alors, Passang uh, is the first one to write égalité. <rire> ok I was expecting a sentence, uh, Passang. Chrismo, la révolution contre le racisme systémique. Be careful because in French, this ism words end with e. So, I-S-M-E. D'accord Origani, vous ne voulez... Alors, be careful, you need to put the voulez form. Hein? So, the verb vouloir, when you conjugate it, it should be voulez, V-O-U-L-E-Z. Harry qui nous dit le racisme et le cancer. Don qui nous dit égalité. <rire> Uh, Don, you could make a sentence, come on. Yes, hero, allez. Alors, font la manifestation contre le racisme pour obtenir la valeur de la République française. Oui, yes, hero, something is missing after your article, les. I don't know exactly what you wanted to put. Kajal, il y a beaucoup de jeunes qui protestent. Remember, you don't put être, hein. You just conjugate your verb protester, qui proteste euh, contre le racisme. Hein. Remember, Kajal, hein, protester pour, for, protester contre, against, uh, something. Andrea, nous sommes tous égaux, très bien. Rita, pers des personnes manifestant contre le racisme, très bien écrit. Maybe you should put uh, an article before a person, or then you put des personnes. Chino Chino, les gens vont avec le panneau, oui. Euh, Mujahid, le racisme tue aussi, oui. Alors, really good, and especially the verb is really well uh, uh, conjugated, uh, Mujahid. So the verb, hein, it's tué, and tué, it's a regular verb from the first group, but you write it like that, it was perfect. Stéphanie, alors attention Stéphanie, remember, racisme, it's masculine. So, le, and then you put a in the end, est une pandémie. Oui, pandémie, the French, French version. <laughs> we don't put pandémique, but we put pandémie. Mohana, ça peut être un coup contre le racisme, oui. Ankan, une manifestation, oui. Et Macho Mao, il y a beaucoup de gens qui protestent, oui. Mouskan, je peux voir des gens manifester contre le racisme, et il est vrai que le racisme est une pandémie. Les gens doivent se battre pour leurs droits. Tout le monde doit avoir des droits et un statut. Ego, ah ok, so ego is touching des droits et un statut, d'accord, Muscan, parfait, Ice Cubes, des gens, alors attention, be careful Ice Cubes, because when you put les gens, in that case, the verb faire should be uh, in the plural form, but the third, third form, so F-O-N-T, font, les gens font une manifestation contre le Racisme. Oui. Euh, Yossi, il y a beaucoup de gens dans la rue, dans, 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 qui font une manifestation. In French, we don't use démonstration, it's manifestation, et demande contre le racisme. It's a strange structure after. Et demande, demander quelque chose contre le racisme. So maybe you should add some, some, something more. Euh, Luciana, c'est une agglomération aussi, oui. Maria Bettiania, il y a beaucoup de monde dans une protestation, une manifestation. In French, we use manifestation contre le racisme dans la pandémie. Yep. Well, the idea is to put uh, racisme et pandémie. Hein. Euh, Monisha, le racisme est mauvais. Oui, il détermine l'égalité. I'm not sure about the, the, the last part, uh, Monisha. Save the best. Le racisme est une maladie qui touche les ignorants. Oui, you should put the plural form of ignorant. Les, les ignorants. And you make a beautiful liaison between the two. Les ignorants. Euh, Sapna, je peux voir une manifestation à propos du racisme. Okay, je suis totalement d'accord. <rire> Ok, bah, tout le monde, mais oui <rire> Daria, ce message est totalement vrai. Le racisme et la discrimination existent encore en 2020. And it's incredible if you think about that. But c'est bizarre et on en discute constamment à la télé. Mais en réalité, les actions sont plus importantes, féminin, pluriel, que les mots. Ankan, les gens, be careful, Ankan, when you write Jean, you write it 
G-E-N-S, you don't put anything, font une manifestation contre le racisme. Rit où il y avait du monde dans la rue pour protester contre le racisme. Ok. Ensuite, euh, Jess Wynn, le racisme est une pandémie. Be careful in French, pandémie, it's not C, but it's E. Lily, les gens manifestent contre le racisme. Contre. I just called, il y a une protestation, oui, une manifestation contre le racisme. Les gens détestent le racisme, mais ils agissent au contraire. And it's strange. We could discuss about that and it's true. Euh... <rire> Ivan, c'est un fait que le racisme est une pandémie, car il y a beaucoup de gens qui pensent que seulement les gens blancs peuvent avoir des droits et qu'en revanche, les autres races ne les ont pas du tout. C'est vrai, Ivan. Euh, je suis la nier en France. Il y a une manifestation contre le racisme. Très bien. Eh bien, écoutez, merci euh, beaucoup, en tout cas. Alors, let's learn how to say no. And as I said... <laughs> <laughs> My son doesn't need to learn that because he already knows how to say no. But so uh, I will give you some, uh, I mean, forms uh, at the informative, uh, affirmative form, and then I'm expecting you to give me the negative form. So the idea will be to cover. So le présent, le passé composé, le futur proche, and then le passé récent. Okay. So we'll start obviously with. The present form so could you please give me the negative form of je prends Alors, we agree that in that case, it's not really tricky because you've got, well, a form of verb that is not compound. So you've got only prend like that. So you will obviously put the first part of the negative form, ne, before your verb, and then the second part of the negative form, pas, after the verb. So je ne prend pas. So it will be... The same for all the tenses that will have only one form of the verb. So I'm not talking about the compound tenses, for instance. Okay, so all these tenses will be just like that. Ne before the verb and pa after the verb. But, of course, I mean, if we take passé composé, passé composé, it's a tricky one. Because passé composé, it's a compound tense. So, look, it goes, of course, like that. J'ai pris. So, you can see that you've got two forms. You've got first the helping verb, avoir, and then you've got the past participle, pris. So, try to impress me and give me the negative form of this form. Alors, we do agree that uh, this is uh, one thing. Whoop, it's, it looks strange on my screen. I, one second, I will just try to make it look nicer like that because there is no space between the N apostrophe and the A. So, um, in these uh, situations, when you have the compound tenses, so it means that first, uh, the first part of the negative form, so ne, will come before your helping verb. Okay, so it's ne. 
because the helping verb in that case it's avoir and as you can see it starts with a vowel so it means that your e uh will have to disappear and you put the apostrophe n n je ne and the important thing that you need to remember is that the pa is coming right after your helping verb je ne pa and finally you put your past participle pris. Je n'ai pas pris. Really be careful because it's a common mistake to say je n'ai pris pas. No, no, no. Pas is not coming after your past participle. It's coming before. It's after your helping verb. Je n'ai pas pris. D'accord? Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Let's have a look now. I need to click from there now. Hop là. Futur proche, s'il vous plaît. Futur proche, look. The futur proche is in fact the verb aller with the infinitive. So it means that it's je vais prendre. How do you put the negative form of je vais prendre? Alors, we do agree that we've got two verbs in that case. Hein? We've got first the verb aller, that is conjugated, and then we've got prendre in infinitive form. So, it means that your negative form will only impact the first verb. Je ne vais pas. And then after that, you put your infinitive. Je ne vais pas prendre. So, it will be, well, slightly the same concept, in fact, with the passé récent. Passé récent, remember that it's this recent past. And the recent past, it's by using the verb venir in the present form with the preposition de and after that the infinitive. Look at that. Je viens de prendre. Hein? It's this just concept in English. I just took. In French, we keep that with this structure. Je viens de de prendre. Could you show me, please, how you can put the negative form on this structure? Alors, this is not really tricky because basically it is exactly the same thing as we had previously. So, the negative form will impact the first verb that is conjugated. So, it's venir. Hein? Je ne, first part, viens, conjugated verb in the middle and then pas right after. Je ne viens pas de prendre. The three nouns of the day, and this is it. Look at this picture, photo, and find me three nouns. I don't want verbs, I don't want adjectives, I don't want adverbs, I want nouns, and please put the article just to know if it's masculine or feminine.
Alors, je regarde, je regarde. Um, just looking at the things that you write. Be careful with um, Yossi, le jaquet, non. Um, I guess that you won't say la, la veste. La veste or then le manteau. Uh, you need to check uh, that. I'm looking at the others. Be careful, passang, passang, it's not le color, it's la couleur. Hein? La couleur. Uh, some of you wanted to use planche à roulette and others a uh, skateboard. Both of them are uh, totally acceptable. So planche à roulette will be feminine. Une planche à roulette. And then skateboard, c'est, uh, we pronounce it skateboard. <laughs> and then it's masculine. Un skateboard. Un skateboard and then une planche à roulette. Um, I'm looking at your words, huh? so I'm just uh, commenting if I see any, any mistakes. Uh, if I don't see any mistakes, I don't say anything. Kajal Malik, be careful, it's une veste, it's feminine. Uh, Mohana, it's not partinage, it's patinage, but it's not really patinage, it's, it doesn't really go for the skateboarding uh, concept. Patinage, it's really skating. Uh, and skating, it's like uh, patinage, whether you when you've got some rollers or then uh, ice skates, for instance. So it's, uh, it's slightly different, not for the skateboarding. I'm looking at the other ones. I think it's quite good. I mean, le skate, oui. Monisha qui dit le skate. You need to pronounce it uh, the French way. Like uh, Irene. Irene or Irene is writing le t-shirt. Okay, but you need to pronounce it the French way. Le t-shirt. Um, I'm looking at the other ones. Uh, papillon, un bonnet, une fille, un mur. Be careful, mur is masculine. So it's un Mur, Charlie nous dit une fille, un manteau gris, d'accord, planche à roulette, ouais, Mouscan, be careful, planche à roulette, roulette, you should put it in a, in a plural form, because you get several, several uh, roulettes, in fact. Bon, eh ben écoutez, pour l'instant, tout va bien, merci beaucoup. Allez, so now it's the next one and the next one, it's the, la dictée, la dictée du jour, the dictation of the day. So remember that I will have two, uh, uh, well, pronounce four sentences that will be A1, A1, A2, A2. I will pronounce them two times. You will have to write them, please. And then after that, I will check if everything is Okay, so we can start with the first one, and the first one is A1, so it's really, I mean, we're talking about the beginner's uh, sentences, I mean, for the level, so you should not be scared, try your best, and I'm pretty sure that everything will be okay. Get ready, I will just pronounce it two times. Je prends le train avec elle. Je prends le train avec elle. Alors, Origami is telling me that uh, you're, you're from the US and you're waiting for your evening classes. <laughs> yeah, but I need to have more people. I mean, I mean, I didn't have enough people, uh, uh, but of course I'm ready. I am really ready to, 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 to make some in evening classes for the US. No problem about that. But I, 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 I wait to have a lot of persons. This is the thing because otherwise, you know, it can be... Well, I mean, the idea is to gather as many persons as uh, we can. So, look at that. So, oh, wow. I mean, you're extremely reactive. Uh, be careful. So, now I'm looking at your forms. And at the same time, I will comment. So, the verb is prendre. Prendre, third group. I mean, third group. So, it's a bit tricky. But remember, the way to conjugate it in the present tense is je prends 
remember you don't put i mean you don't pronounce the s and you don't pronounce the d but it should be there p r e n d s je prends and after that it's not really tricky le train i mean in most of the cases i'm looking at your answers you write it really well so no problem le train be careful uh, meg now you've been hearing le temps but it was the le train uh, the train le train d'accord and then avec elle so i mean so far so good because what you wrote i mean it was really really good so let's see if i can trick you <laughs> with the next one still a1 so i think it should be it should be quite quite clear so i will pronounce it as clearly as i can okay nous allons manger avec eux and now i will make the liaison okay nous allons manger avec eux Alors, in that case, well, I mean, obviously, I wanted to, you to go in this near future concept. So, remember, we had it previously. This near future is just a way to express the future, but with uh, uh, verbs from, I mean, the, the, the present tense. So, we are using, in that case, the verb aller that we conjugate in the present at the new form. Nous allons. And then we put the verb manger. We are going to eat. In French, it's we go eat. Nous allons manger. After that, uh, it's avec. In most of the cases, you write it quite well. So avec, it's not a problem. E, you rem remember that this is, I mean, this pronouns, the pronoun tonique. Moi, toi, lui. Elle, nous, vous, eux, elle. And eux, well, you write it like you see on the screen, e, u, x. So just imagine you could switch. Hein? Nous allons manger avec moi, with me. Nous allons manger avec toi, with you. Nous allons manger avec lui, with him. Nous allons manger avec elle, with her, nous allons manger avec eux, in that case. Okay, so I hope it's clear. So let's have a look at the next one. So we're going a bit higher. And then I will try to read it a bit faster, but not that fast. Elles viennent de les rencontrer. Elles viennent de les rencontrer. Alors, Charlie is asking, allons with two L's or one L? Well, Charlie, no, 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 it's two L's because you're connecting that to the, the, the infinitive. Infinitive aller is with two L's. So you should definitely keep that. Put the two L's for nous allons and put the two L's for vous allez, okay? But for the others, obviously, it's je vais, tu vas, il va, and then ils vont. So let's have a look now at, uh, well, the next one. The next one is, once again, at this level, you should master this near future concept that we saw previously in the lesson. So it means that it's the verb venir with the preposition de and then the verb in the infinitive form. So it means that in that case, 
I've been putting obviously the plural because it's a bit tricky. Elles viennent. Remember, we had that few minutes ago. Elles viennent. De, we put the preposition de. Then the verb rencontrer should be definitely in the infinitive form. Elles viennent de rencontrer. But of course, I want it to be a bit nasty and put a pronoun before your rencontrer verb. Elles viennent de les rencontrer. Remember that in French, once again, the pronouns, and especially this one, pronoun complément d'objet direct, should be placed before the verb it is connected to. So in that case, the pronoun les is connected to rencontrer, so it must be right before it. Elles viennent de les rencontrer. The last one for the dictation. Je ne veux pas le faire. Je ne veux pas le faire. Alors, I'm looking at your things. So now, of course, I wanted to use vouloir because we saw that vouloir is a bit tricky when we conjugated that in the present form and especially for the first person. So, je ne veux, V-E-U-X, but so far, so good. I mean, you can be proud of yourself because you write it perfectly. So, V-E-U-X, d'accord? So, je veux. Then we put the negative form, je ne veux pas. Okay, so this is clear. After that, we put the second verb, faire, which should be in the, in the infinitive. Je ne veux pas faire. And then, because you know that I want to, 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 to put some pronouns, because we use a lot of pronouns in French, faire something, so it means that The pronoun should be before your verb. Je ne veux pas le 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 faire. Ok? Je ne veux pas le faire. Alors, Sapna is asking a question. Elle vient et elle vient. La prononciation est la même. Comment nous pouvons comprendre? Ok, Sapna. So, Sapna... And for the others, take the time to really uh, concentrate on the verb, so because it, we're going back to venir. Huh? So, look at the comment of Sapna, because we will work on that. The verb is venir. So, venir to come. In that case, je viens. Yin, yin, yin. Tu viens. Yin, yin, yin. Il, elle, vient. Yin, yin, yin. Okay? So... This is the sound y. But after that, the form that you're writing, Sapna, for the plural form, it's totally different because basically your double N opens the sound of the E. Uh, and the E uh becomes E. Eh. Make it longer. Make it longer. Il vient. Elle vient. And so, clearly, you can hear the difference between the singular form, elle vient, this is a nasal, it goes in your nose, the N is included in the sound, elle vient, and the other one, it's elle vienne, n, n, vienne. So, clearly, you can see that, I mean, the difference is, at least for French-speaking persons, quite huge. 
And I understand that it might be a bit challenging, but we can work on that. And you know what, Sapna? I might make a little challenge on that for the next Pronounce With Me thing. <laughs> Okay, are you ready? Are you ready to win? <laughs> Alors, one second, because you know how it works. So once again, once again, because it's the time to have some fun. I mean, we've been doing some grammar. We've been doing a lot of things together. So look at that. So I will write on my notepad. Well, it's not a notepad, to be totally honest. It's just a sheet of paper today. So I will note a number that is from 1 to 100. Okay, just give me one second because I, I will do it right now. And that's it. It's written. So I'm not, I'm just, you know, closing the thing like that. Hopla. It's written. D'accord. So now you will have to try to guess the number and please let let's be nice i mean i don't want to do the police i don't want to look if you know <laughs> persons have been you know putting two numbers or only one i mean we're it's like a family we're between friends so please put only one answer right now and i'm not looking at it right now so and after that the will that mean the winner will get uh, the access for the beginner package on my platform french for me Oh, you started already. It's incredible. It's incredible. So, à quoi pense Vincent? Alors, Sandra Walsh, are you here? Sandra, please tell us that you are here. Because Sandra, just like that, and extremely fast, gave us the incredible number 66. 66, Sandra, you are the lucky one. So please, let's be nice together. Let's congratulate Sandra. Sandra just won this access to the beginners uh, courses that I've got on French for me. So really, really, I mean, congratulations, Sandra.
Eh ben voilà, eh bien voilà, Sandra, 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 let me, let me explain you the way it will go. So you just need to go and register for uh, frenchforme.net, so my platform, and then, and then you send me a message and I will give you the access to uh, the, the, the lessons. But really, you know, this is, this is, The kind of gift that <laughs> involves some kind of, uh, well, counterpart. So you will have to learn and you will have to make some progress. And everyone will be there to make sure that you make some progress. But really, it's nice. I'm really happy for you, Sandra. So, uh, well, do it. Okay, register. And then after that, uh, I will give you the access. Okay, so the next one is what does she say and look at that. I mean, what does she say? So one sentence, please, to tell me uh, what do you think she's saying? It seems that Charlie A is the first one to think that she says le virus a été éradiqué. C'est possible. Papillon 97 thinks that she says attention, attention, grève des SNCF. <laughs> It's possible, but not lately, because my daughter, she managed to take the, the train today. Everything is okay. Chris Mo, les étudiants de Vincent sont très intelligents. C'est possible, oui Victoria Jacques, elle dit, elle dit, elle dit, tout le monde aime les... Oh, mais c'est gentil, mais il faut... <rire> tout le monde aime les vidéos de Vincent. Merci beaucoup, merci beaucoup. Euh, Sarah qui nous dit, suivez-moi. Ah oui elle dit « Suivez-moi, c'est possible ». Ice Cubes, elle dit « Vincent, ce show vivant est incroyable <laughs> ».« Mais non <laughs> !»« But yeah, but I want you to write some stuff in French now euh, ». Ensuite, Justine nous dit, elle dit « Allons-y les gens ». C'est vrai, c'est pas mal de dire « Allons-y ». Dessart, elle crie à tout le monde. Alors attention, Dessart. Faites attention, because the verb crier, it's a regular verb, so you write it C-R-I-E-R. -E But then, when you conjugate it, you need to conjugate it like a regular verb, so it means that for L, you will write it C-R-I-E. D'accord And then, Ritou, les soldes, les soldes sont là. <laughs> C'est possible. Uh, M&M19, elle dit, congratulations, Sandra, bravo Sandra, ben oui, Sandra, she's the, she's the, 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 the winner of the day, hein? c'est la gagnante de la journée, Sandra, you can have some champagne and, and enjoy life, alors ensuite, Victoria qui nous dit, elle dit tout, ah donc on avait vu Victoria, je regarde les autres parce que Luciana qui nous dit, elle dit « Restez en ligne <rire> !» Mohana Devi, elle annonce son succès peut-être. Daria, elle dit « Abonnez-vous à la chaîne de Vincent <rire> !» 
nous <rire> Alors, Kajal, elle annonce, attention, pour beaucoup de pollution dans la ville. C'est possible, c'est vrai qu'on a beaucoup parlé de la pollution maintenant. Hein. YouTube, je n'ai pas pris. I don't get it, YouTube browser, je n'ai pas pris. What do you want to say with that euh, Yesero, elle dit, soyez heureux. Tout le monde. Voilà, Yesero, c'est quelqu'un de très optimiste. Sonia, elle dit qu'elle est dit. I'm not sure I get it, Sonia. I'm sorry. Shramani, salut. Euh, Voulez-vous danser avec moi I'm always ready to, to, to dance. Hein. Shravani, always ready to dance and to sing. Yossi, tout le monde, passez, s'il vous plaît, à côté de la rue. Oui. Mouskan, d'accord. Alors, attendez. Wow, you've been writing some really strange things lately. <rire> Alors, je suis la Nino dit, elle dit, écoutez-moi, messieurs, mesdames, pour ma cause, probablement. Bickert nous dit, elle nous dit, s'il vous plaît, tout le monde, j'expliquerai une chose importante pour les gens. Mm -hmm. euh, très bien. Xuan nous dit, venez, il y a des soldes, probablement. <rire> Maria Bethania, elle dit qu'elle est heureuse parce qu'elle va faire le tour du monde avec l'amour de sa vie. Probablement, et ça ce serait bien, c'est difficile de faire le tour du monde actuellement. Sapna, elle dit que le coronavirus a disparu à l'aide du haut-parleur. <rire> Alors Charlie veut que je chante. Non, je ne chanterai pas. Excusez-moi. Alors, the tip of the day, and the tip of the day, you know, I mean, the concept is quite simple. It's just to exchange some practices and things that you do when you learn French. And so in that case, um, I would like to know, in fact, how often per week do you try, of course, to study French? I mean, it's an average, of course, but how often per week do you try to study French? And if you feel that, I mean, it's a right pace and it's a good way to learn French. So try to answer whether in French or in English, it's up to you. at what you're writing and so Victoria is writing 7 jours so I understand that it's uh, 7 jours par semaine uh, donc tous les jours Retou uh, is saying presque 3 fois par semaine ok Yossi je le fais chaque jour ok so every day um, ensuite alors attendez Sarah 2 heures par jour ok uh, Origami 1 heure chaque jour très bien Rogers Adrian, twice a week, ok. Luciana nous dit, j'essaie d'étudier un petit peu français tous les jours, ok, so a little bit every day. Labid, uh, four hours a week, d'accord. Uh, Sarah, je suis au Québec récemment avec une école pour les langues, ok, so I understand that it, it must be daily in your case. Uh, because if you, I mean, that's the concept, hein, Sarah, whether you're in Quebec, where in, in any, any French speaking places, just interact as much as you can with people, make mistakes, go and try, and, and, and it's the, the, the only way to, to, to progress. Papillon, recently, almost every day, either with you, uh, then I have uh, quite a few, few exercises, ah, I'm lost, books and I practice Uh, exercises, d'accord. Emma Chomao, tous les jours, ok. 
Kajal, j'essaie d'apprendre le français deux ou trois heures chaque jour. Wow, ok. Euh, Shravani, j'aime étudier six jours par semaine, deux ou trois heures. Oui, it's quite, it's, it's a lot, hein, Shravani, it's good. Sonia, I'm practicing through the application. Uh, Duolingo, donc every day, ok. Yesero, j'essaie d'étudier 7 jours sur 7, au moins une heure, donc une heure par jour, Yesero. And you know what, Yesero, I mean, you can be proud of yourself because you write so well. So, of course, you make some little mistakes, but it's okay. I mean, you, I, I, I could see the, the, the progress, hein, Yesero. Be proud of yourself. Because you are progressing a lot. Daria, j'apprends le français avec vous. Donc tous les jours, sauf le dimanche. Oui. <laughs> le dimanche, on fait une pause maintenant. Hein? Been noticing. You've been noticing. I need to rest. <laughs> Qu'il y a une belle occasion de pratiquer de façon une ambiance amicale et relaxante. Et beaucoup d'informations. Bien sûr, il y a beaucoup d'informations. MNM19, quand je trouve le temps, mais je regarde beaucoup de vidéos sur YouTube tous les jours, ok Desarlika, j'essaye d'apprendre le français tous les jours, ok euh, Ice Cubes, juste je secours et je parle avec les gens, je n'étudie pas comme j'étudiais pendant la quarantaine. Oui, non, ça c'est important, Ice Cubes, hein. it's good to tout tout. To change and not to always study in the same way, just just adapt the thing to, to your reality, to the, 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 the way you live. Hein. Euh, alors attendez, ensuite je regarde, Sapna, tous les jours, 4 heures, 4 heures Sapna, wow, et je regarde Peppa Pig, <laughs> Peppa Pig, I used to watch that with my, my daughter and, and my son too, Peppa Pig. It's really nice. I should, I should, I, yeah, uh, maybe, Sapna, you could, you could upgrade the Peppa Pig and go a bit, uh, a bit higher, especially if you're using uh, YouTube, I could, and I should give you some, uh, some tips for, uh, um, you know, higher level of the thing. Lily, uh, j'étudie une heure chaque jour et trois heures le samedi. Très bien, Lily. Save the best pendant mon temps libre. Uh, la première chose que je fais, c'est d'étudier le français. Très bien. Uh, save the best, it's the same. Same for you as Yesero. I saw the, the, the progress and uh, I'm following that. So don't worry about that. I've got a good memory on my students, so <laughs> I can follow the thing. I just call say chaque jour deux heures. Wow. Wow. Merci, merci. Avec mes leçons. C'est gentil. I just call it's the same. You're, you're one of the... the, the huh? The person that were here from the beginning. Merci beaucoup. Uh, Mujahid, she said... You... <laughs> no, Mujahid. Alors, Charlie, quand je chante... I've been, I've been singing a lot of songs on my channel for my, for my uh, daughter and my son, and I've been recording them. Je suis Lani. Every day when I'm driving, I listen to a French radio station. It's good. And perhaps I'm learning that, that way too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Je suis Lani. If you learn to, to French radio station, it depends what it is. If it's for the news, in most of the cases, you will grab some, some words. Passively, you will grab some words, so you don't really need to to stress about that. After that, the, the, you need to activate. I mean, this is the, this is the point. But uh, by listening like that, it's, it's, always, uh, it's always good. Alors, so before letting you go, I just want to remind you that we've got this interesting, really interesting thing. Uh, and, and I've been receiving some videos. I am uh, working on them. So I will put a video on that, but it's really funny. So the idea will be to together start to, I mean, work on the pronunciation. So first thing, I would like you to record yourself with your phone or I mean, whatever device you have to record yourself when you pronounce the phrase that I will give you. Then you send me the video uh, to pronounce at fluent2plus.com. And then, of course, I will in a nice manner because, I mean, this is the point. I mean, the point is really to help you. I will make a video with all the clips and give you some tips regarding the pronunciation. So I will really take the time to correct or help you 
to make sure that you can pronounce uh, perfectly French, okay? The sentence is the following. Je voudrais visiter la France, mais c'est difficile en ce moment. Je voudrais visiter la France, mais c'est difficile en ce moment. Please, when you record yourself, try to pronounce this sentence two times. So I can take the time to really, really listen to it carefully and give you the best advices that you want to have. Merci beaucoup and I hope you will have a great, great day. It was so fun to do that together. So let's see tomorrow. It will be for intermediate or then in two days for advance or after the cycle continues. Beginners, intermediate and advanced.